How's it going gamers? My name is Rushcode and today we're looking at what I would like to say is the final phase for my Minecraft project. In phase 4 I had to do something involving this type of landscaping which uses a function called Perlin Noise. It was a nightmare to learn, but when I finally figured it out, I created my own version in the blueprints. This one doesn't look very good because you can see there's all these blocks here and there, and that's only because of the linear interpolation that I used for it. If I were to use something known as a fade function, then the result would look more like this. You can see that all of those jagged edges are now evened out, and the only edges you see are just based on the block heights themselves. So this wavy water-like effect is what I was trying to achieve with my own landscape. The simulations I just showed are based on a set of nodes that I connected together here, but I won't be going into detail on these just because I use them just for demonstration purposes. If you want to know more about it, let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to try and make some kind of video that explains what this is. And it does involve Perlin noise, which I'll get into a little bit in this video. But again, this thing would require a whole video on its own, maybe two videos to explain. And I'm not sure if I'm best equipped to do that just yet. For now, I'm just going to talk about phase four, where we do all the usual stuff, just like phase three, you know, you calculate the first and final chunk, put it through two custom for loops, calculate all the block information, and then spawn the chunk. There's nothing really different here, except for the fact that in the chunk, rather than randomizing the block spawning, I randomize it from the bottom up using Perlin noise and do the Z loop as the innermost loop. And the easy way around it is once I've calculated my Perlin noise, I simply feed it into the Z to decide how high up I'm going to generate my blocks. And here's a quick snapshot of what Perlin noise looks like visually. It is quite beautiful but also very complicated from a mathematical perspective. And I'll give you a quick rundown. So first of all you would feed in the coordinate of where you want to generate your Perlin noise which first starts off with an offset towards the actual Perlin array. The array would house 256 different numbers all in a random sequence and these coordinates will attempt to pull one of those values out after being offset or realigned to the array. From there it generates a few vectors which would just be the corner points of your grid. So in the briefest term if you were to think of your entire world as being just one big plane, you might have chunks inside this world of equal size, and then in those chunks, you'd be generating Perlin noise based on every point of intersection. So you might set up this one here to have a gradient of that particular angle, this might have a different gradient, this might have a different gradient, and so on and so forth. These gradients are known as the gradient vectors or vertices, which I like to call A, B, C, D. So if I'm looking at a coordinate in here, I would reference it to those four corners. If the coordinate was, say, in in this chunk over here, it would reference these gradients instead. So those corners are calculated as A, B, C, D based on whichever chunk we're in right now. And then their gradient vectors are generated using some kind of complicated nested array calls where you call the same array three times, but that creates a bit of randomization to it, but it's completely predictable. So the only way you can change that is maybe by changing the Z value because we don't really use that for parallel generation here. After that, it converts the number to a base of 16, which then calls from a very special array of gradient values. Technically, there are only 12 different types of gradient configurations you can get for any vertex point. So these last four are actually repeats only because we need 16 different options to make it divisible by 256 and picked specifically based on the fact that they are balancing with each other three-dimensionally using what is known as a regular tetrahedron. There's more information on this in Ken Perlin's article about improved Perlin noise and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. So that value is fed back in as the gradient vector which is represented for each corner and then a distance is calculated from those corners to the current point we're looking at based on a particular linear ratio which is used later and then they are multiplied together using something special called a dot product and all of that information is then fed into what is known as a linear interpolation or LERP for short. So if you were to imagine one of these chunks with a bunch of blocks inside it getting calculated for their parallel noise values, each corner will have some kind of dot product value between negative 2 and positive 2. So if we were to imagine this was negative 1 and this was positive 1.5, the value for this point over here or this block can be linearly interpolated based on how far it is from negative 1 and how far it is from 1.5. So most likely this value here would be something like 0.9 and the same thing is done between C and D with their respective values. So we'll get some 
other interpolated value here, let's say negative 0.5. And then based on the difference in their y distances, another value is interpolated between 0.9 and negative 0.5. So the final value could be something like 0.3. And that is what comes out at the end here after the x interpolations and the y interpolation is done. This bit over here simply changes the offset or realignment so that the values are between 0 and 1. And we're changing it from negative 1 and 1 because even though these values here might give you anything between negative 2 and 2, the overall value generally tends to come out between negative 1 and 1. I'm not too sure why that is in terms of a maths point of view, but if one of you guys know, please let me know down in the comments below. So that value then gets saved as the Perlin noise value, which when we come back to our main function is put through a little bit of maths just to make sure the value is rescaled to the full height of the chunk, which in my case is going to be a height of 10. And that will be the highest or last index that the program is allowed to draw for that particular block coordinate. And because the Z coordinates are being looped through first, in one chunk space, the blocks would be iterated upwards before moving on to the next X or y value and it will only go as high as the scaled Perlin noise value. From there it just goes into merging the coordinates and spawning the actual block. And that's the only thing that's new here because I could already draw all the chunks in phase 3. And when you run the simulation you get something that doesn't actually look half bad. You can see there's a little bit of terrain here and there so there's like a dip here some hills. It's actually pretty good. The only issue though is the fact that it actually chugs a little bit as I move around, meaning that if I wanted to make more layers, this is going to be exponentially more difficult to run or to compute. So currently the best fix I could come up with is a simple little trick with minimal change. All I needed to do was change which index I drew. So instead of drawing all the blocks from bottom to top, I only draw the top block because ultimately you're just standing on top of the land and you don't need to see what's going on underneath. So by hooking up the final block as the only one to loop, our result is much quicker to compute and can run a lot smoother. It just looks a little strange when you go underneath, but that's not really an issue if you're going to be running around on top of the world here. But when I changed the chunk size to having a height of 20, I noticed a different kind of problem, which is that you actually see a lot of gaps now because the terrain and the slopes are being stretched thinner, meaning that drawing the top block block isn't good enough anymore if you want to hide those gaps. So I added this extra note here, which just says that we're going to draw from one block just below the final block to cover all those extra gaps here and there. So it looks much better now. It's still not a perfect fix. Obviously, you can see there's like some gaps here, for example. But overall, I was pretty happy with what I achieved with the little that I knew. And because the performance is so much better now, I can double or quadruple the world size and it will still look pretty good. This has been something that I've wanted to make for a long time. I've always loved stuff about procedural generation and randomization. But the fact that I made this and actually pulled it off is kind of still sinking in for me. I hope this was fun for you guys as much as it was for me to make it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you have any questions on Perlin noise, I'd be more than happy to try and answer those. Or if you would like to see me make a video specifically about Perlin noise generation, let me know in the comments as well. So thanks for watching guys. And if you liked it, smash like, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Rush code out.